welcome to a French Collection podcast, a go-to podcast for everything on France, hosted by me, Annette Charlton. With guests, candid insights into living in France, travel discussions and more, our show will transport you to the land of cheese and croissants. So now let's dive into our next episode. Hello and thank you for joining me again on another podcast by me, Annette, and a French collection. Thanks for joining me over on Facebook and Instagram uh, yesterday where I shared with you what we would be uh, talking about on today's podcast. And it's about the most beautiful villages of France. It's actually an association and it's called the most beautiful villages of France. And on our share yesterday when we went live, I actually showed you the the guide that um, I would be referencing uh, today. And uh, again, what I'll ask you to do is please excuse my French. I didn't learn French when I was at school. And every time we've actually stayed at our house, I don't know how much you already know about me, but my family is a Newcastle family. We live in Newcastle, New South Wales in Australia. And a little over 11 years ago, we decided to buy a holiday house in France. And so a lot of my uh, podcasts and blog posts refer to the times that we have lived over there, different things that we've experienced and places that we've traveled to. So while we're over there, even though we've been coming and going for some time now, our everyday practice of French has been quite limited because the people around us in our village always like to practice their English on us. So we tend to be helping them with their English rather than as we first thought would happen, we would be able to do a lot of practicing with them on our everyday French. So without a formal background in learning French or speaking a lot of everyday French with uh, the people as we had anticipated, some of my pronunciations of these beautiful villages of France may not be um, 100% correct, but bear with me. I'm sure that you're still going to learn a lot and you're going to love finding out about these beautiful villages. So when you think France, do you think of the beautiful medieval villages perched on the top of rocky peaks, maybe cobblestone lands, uh, pastel shutters, steep narrow steps, small chapels, half-timbered houses, pretty flower boxes and walled gardens? Well, if you're thinking of any of those things, you are not alone. This is the image of France that many of us have in our minds and it's what takes travellers back time and time again. There are just so many beautiful villages to explore and admire in France. It literally could take a lifetime. Thankfully, you don't have to travel the breadth and depth of the country to find the most beautiful ones for yourself. This has already been done by the Association of the Most Beautiful Villages of France and it's gorgeously presented in their guide which is called The Most Beautiful Villages of France. I've actually bought the last two guides as a reference for my writing. It's a travel guide for us to find new villages to explore and simply because I love all of the stunning photos. There's a lot more about the guide and a few beautiful villages that are really worth lingering in. Feeling the cool water of the village fountain and sampling all the regional delicacies. The official guide itself, it lists 159 villages, actually a little bit, um, a a little bit on all of those villages with suggested walks and hikes around the scenic villages, the local history of each location, the events and activity suggestions and the dates that these occur on. It lists accommodation and restaurant options and it even lists the gastronomic and artisanal uh, specialties of each village. With stunning photos throughout the book's 277 pages, it's really like a treasure chest of your own with travel ideas or it's perfect for a bit of daydreaming. The Association of the Most Beautiful Villages of France was formed in early 1981. It was after Charles Serec found a book called The Most Beautiful Villages of France and it was published by the selection of Reader's Digest. Charles was mayor of the village of Collange la Rouge in Corrèze, and he thought that he could create a similar book for the purpose of protecting and promoting the exceptional heritage of France's most beautiful villages. 
66 mayors signed up to Charles's initiative, which was made official on the 6th of March 1982 at Salaires in Cantal, France. Today, this national network of 159 villages works together to protect and enhance the heritage of the exceptional locations by promoting their unique qualities to the world and actively promoting their economic development. So let's find out a little bit about how a village becomes uh, awarded a most beautiful village of France. There are three steps to be followed for the village to be included. These are meeting the preliminary criteria, then satisfying the 27 evaluation criteria, and then receiving the verdict of the Quality Commission. So firstly, meeting the primary, uh, preliminary criteria. Any village wanting to be included in the list and join the association must submit an application first, showing that the village meets the following criteria. The total population of the village can be no more than 2,000 inhabitants. It must have at least two protected sites or monuments, like historic landmarks. It has to be able to show proof of mass support for the application for membership via public debate. Next, there is the 27 evaluation criteria. Once the application is reviewed and accepted, the village then receives a site visit. The local council is interviewed, a photographic report is prepared and a 27-point checklist on the village's historical, architectural, urban and environmental positives is completed. Next comes the verdict of the Quality Commission. Once the site visit, the checklist and the photographic report is done, it all gets put before the Quality Commission. The Quality Commission has the sole power to make the decision on whether to accept the village. If a village is approved, then they join the association and they are re-evaluated regularly. So that's the process of how a village is incorporated into the association. Now I'm going to have a look uh, with you at some of the villages that have been qualified and are part of the 159 villages. There's quite a lot, so we'll, we'll have a look at a few now. We'll have a look at a few more, perhaps after our sponsor's uh, words to us. So we'll have a look at Collange La Rouge in Corrèze. It's in Department 19, with a small population of 455. It has an altitude of 230 metres. And it's where it all started, with Mr. Sarek's idea, and the village also being included in the association. You can find it on the border between uh, Limousin and Quercy. The red sandstone of Collange contrasts with the green of the vines which ramble on its facades. Many of the homes have vines growing up over the outside and they are in, in bright contrast with the deep red sandstone. Built up around a Benedictine priory and founded in the 8th century, the village came under the lordship of the powerful neighbouring Viscount and was the place of residence of his judicial officers. The village's church, Eglise Saint-Pierre, was built in the 11th and 12th centuries and was an important stopping place when Collange was on the pilgrimage route of St. James Way, the pilgrim route via Rocamadour. In the centre of the village, there is still the communal bread oven, which dates back to the 16th century, from where the grain and the wine market was prosperous. Having a look at another village that is in the guide. Beauvron or Uge. This is in the Calvados department, number 14, with a population of 246 and with an altitude of only 10 metres. It's nestled between valleys dotted with apple trees and half-timbered farmhouses. And if you know about uh, Calvados, you may have also read over on my blog about the apple brandy, Calvados apple brandy. That's uh, something that you might like to have a look at uh, another another time over on the blog. So that's why this area 
is dotted with apple trees. The village is set around the large covered market and it's a celebrated village of the Pays de Orge region. In the 12th century, Beauvron was small with only a small medieval castle and a church. But by the end of the 14th century, and with the influence of the Harcourt family, the town reached its heyday. What makes this place so special? Well, bedecked with geraniums and rendered plaster and pink bricks, the facades of the wooden frame houses, they highlight the village last 400 years of profitability and glory. On the edge of the village, farms, manors and stud farms stretch out into the woods and farmlands, which keeps the town current with local traditions and specialities. Bainek e Gazanek Two villages, one castle and one river. Another most beautiful village of France. This time it's down, the, down in the Dorange department, number 24 with a bigger population at 569 and with an altitude of 130 metres. Curled at the foot of an imposing castle that surveys the Dorange is Bainek and Kazanek, a stunning village beside the river. Occupied since the Bronze Age, about 2000 BCE, the naturally defensive site of Bainek became the seat of one of the four barons of Perigoid during the Middle Ages. The impressive castle was besieged by Richard the Lionheart in 1197, demolished by Simon de Montfort, rebuilt, captured, recaptured during the Hundred Years' War, which is for uh, history buffs, 1337 to 1453 by both the English and the French kings. It was abandoned during the French Revolution and then in 1961 the owner began restoration work and opened it to the public. What can you do here? Well, for many years the village only made its living from passing trade along the Dorange River but now it's a popular place for tourists to stay in, in charming sheets, canoe along the river, walk the local trials and go mountain biking. Lochrenan. This is a historic and beautiful village. It's in the Finestia department, number 29, and with a population of 810 and an altitude of 145 metres. Lochrenan is dominated by its granite buildings and it has a history that's filled with weaving and fabric creation. During the Renaissance, the village became famous for its weaving industry providing sails for the East India Company and ships of the French Navy. The offices of the East India Company are even still standing in the village square, as well as the 17th century merchants dwellings and residence of the king's notaries. The village's beautiful granite buildings have been used as a backdrop in productions and movies, and walking around the ancient church and houses you can imagine some of the Dukes of Brittany waltzing around the corner. And now a word from our sponsor, a French Collection Tours. Thinking of visiting France? A French Collection Tours offer inspirational, luxurious, escorted all-women tours to Paris, Normandy, Brittany and Provence. Imagine seven days with a small group of like-minded women exploring the wonders of France. These fun and exclusive tours focus on culture and art, great food and drink, authentic locations and market trips and boutique shopping. Our French collection tours are perfect to relax and unwind, re-energise and invigorate with everything taken care of for you. Your host Annette Charlton has lived part-time in France with her family for over 11 years and knows how to ensure your tour is perfect. Whether it's bucket list items or secret places Annette knows about, you will truly love the Parisian vibe. And if you want to experience Brittany like a local, then walking, quaint towns, beach walks will delight you. Or if the warmth of the south of France appeals to you, then you'll be spoiled amongst the charming villages and ancient sites on a French collection tour. So if you're thinking of travelling to France, take a look at a French collection tours and create your lasting memories while having the time of your life. Find out more at www 
afrenchcollection.com. So now let's have a look at Moncatour de Bretagne. Moncatour Bretagne has always been loved by our family as it was one of the numerous towns that we explored on the first Christmas holidays that we spent in France after buying our home. This town is a fortified town. It's perched on a rocky escarpment at the meeting of two small rivers in the Côtes de Moor region of northwestern Brittany, which is Department 22. It's between the two other charming towns of Lambelle and Saint-Brieuc. Saint-Brieuc is our closest major town centre. Moncouture has been awarded two special titles. It's officially named as one of the most beautiful villages of France, which is what we're uh, having a look at today. And um, it's also been awarded the prestigious title of being a small town of character. So we'll have a look at the Small Town of Character Award uh, in a moment, but for now, a most beautiful village of France. So it's part of the national network of the villages that, as we mentioned a little bit before, that work to protect and enhance the heritage of the exceptional locations. It's also, of course, to increase their renown and promote their economic development. That's being awarded the title of being a most beautiful village. Being awarded the title of being a petite city de character or a small town of character, it means that the town or village has attained the prestigious award or a claim of being approved to join a different association. This association judges and awards towns to the extent that they protect, restore, promote and present their potential. All of them must meet the primary criteria, namely having urban origins and heritage of the highest quality. That's the quote from the Association of the Small Small Villages. In other words, being awarded these two titles, Moncatur is simply beautiful. It has a lot to see and do. So finding out about the town... The town was founded as long ago as the 11th century as part of the defences for nearby Lambelle, which was the capital of Perithium. Moncature is still encircled by its imposing 13th and 14th century ramparts, and so there's a real medieval atmosphere within the town. It's quite remarkable that the walls still stand, given the town's, uh, well, its tumultuous history. It survived wars and the French Revolution. It was involved in numerous clashes during the Middle Ages and it was even partly dismantled during the French Revolution by the Order of Richelieu. You can see, however, still 11 of its original 15 towers. The town hall has pretty flower boxes and flowers all around the, around the small car parking area. You can easily find the town hall as it's located in the town centre. Some of the half-timbered houses have motifs of fern leaves or the motif of St Andrew's cross and many of the granite manor houses have sculptured pediments, all which have their own history and story to tell. From the 18th century until the Industrial Revolution, Moncatour developed around the production of Berlin, which is canvas or linen cloth. The cloth was exported to South America and the Indies. It was a prosperous time and the granite and the slate grand mansions, the town hall and the church are all reminders of this successful era. The signs around this town is what we fell in love with. They're all unique. The signs show you immediately what is going on in the building. It's a graphic representation of what the building is used for. So some of the highlights that you can uh, enjoy in Moncatour. There's the stained glass windows of the church. They are historically listed due to their design and the quality. And they date back to about the 16th and 18th centuries. There's the Hildegard Garden, which is open on Sundays in summer. It's a medieval vegetable garden and flower garden. There's the Theatre of Costumes. 
There's markets. There's Monday evening markets where local produce is sold. During Pentecost, there's also a procession and there's other festivities that are usually held around that time. There's a medieval festival. It's held on the first Sunday in August on odd years. And there's a painting contest as part of the Festival Dell. The Festival Dell art with its street art and contest is held on the first weekend of September. So going back to the costume theatre, the Theatre of Costumes, it has a permanent exhibition on nights in the Middle Ages with costumes from uh, Louis XVI to the 1900s. Thank you once again for keeping me company as we've gone south to north, east to west and had a look at some of these uh, villages throughout France. So until next time, thank you. And so that brings us to the end of another podcast and our time together. Thanks for listening. I've really enjoyed your company and I look forward to sharing more on France and all things French with you next week. Until then, you can head over to the blog at www.afrenchcollection.com for the full blog post. And so it's um, Merci from me and à bientôt.